Hi, welcome to the recording of the Ruminant Nutrition webinar from Monday the 12th of March 2018. This webinar was presented by Desiree Jackson and made possible through the collaboration between Leading Sheep and Southwest NRM. This is clip three in the series of short recordings from this webinar and covers animal intake and pasture quality. So intake is um, critical and, and it's one of the things that we really need to push because once we bought our properties, it's not going to cost us any more for the amount of feed that animals are eating out of the paddock. So um, the aim is to try and get as much pasture into them as we can because the more pasture they're consuming, the more energy and protein they're receiving in the diet. And as we know, feeding energy supplements becomes very expensive. So we do things such as feed urea uh, and protein meals in small amounts to actually lift intake of pasture, but that can only be done effectively under certain conditions, and it depends on where the nutrient balance is in the diet and which nutrient is most limiting in the diet as to whether or not we're going to get a response to supplementing urea. And let's not overlook phosphorus. So phosphorus deficiency can also have a massive impact on dry matter intake. It's important, it needs to be measured on a um, kilograms of dry matter per head per day basis. So when we do things like uh, forage budgets, we actually need to work them out on kilograms of dry matter per hectare. Um, it's important because, it, as I mentioned, it supplies um, the animal with energy and it also supplies the rumen microbes with energy so that they can digest all that indigestible carbohydrate in the diet. Things that will affect how much an animal is going to eat, obviously um, the main ones and are the amount of pasture that's actually available in, in the paddock. So you can have a very high quality diet, but if the animals can't consume enough um, pasture, then they will still be energy and protein deficient. The digestibility of the feed is really important. So as pastures age, they become less digestible, which means they spend much more time in the room and being digested. So the animal feels full and it doesn't eat as much pasture. And the other one that gets overlooked is a nutrient balance in the diet. Uh, if you go and feed a urea supplement, for example, and your animals are phosphorus deficient, you're not going to get that big lift in pasture intake if something else is missing in the diet. And that could be sulfur if you're on mulga country. Um, it really depends on the nature of your country and um, what some of those endemic deficiencies might be, or just some of those seasonal changes that, that occur. How does it vary between classes of stock and stages of production? Well, young stock, uh, as a proportion of their body weight, actually have very high dry matter intakes, and that's why they're, it's very efficient to have young animals on, on a property as opposed to older, older animals in terms of um, converting feed into um, weight because they're eating a proportionally higher amount of pasture relative to an older animal. Lactating animals also consume a lot more pasture, so we need to account for that when we're actually setting stocking rates. And then we've got animals that use that might have singles or use that might have twins. So if they've got twins, they're going to be eating a lot more pasture as well. If we look at the quality of pasture, so this is um, a graph that I've actually borrowed from the Nutrition Ed workshop notes. Um, and you may have seen this before, and it's looking purely at the quality of tropical grass-based pastures. So you can see that that line has a very steep slope, and then it gradually tapers off. So in those early growth phases, the quality starts off being quite high, but it very quickly declines in the diet. So if you had a pure grass-based pasture with no herbage or legume in the, in the diet, it wouldn't take long for animals that are heavily pregnant or lactating to become energy deficient. And that's why it's important to be conscious of what other species are in the paddock and to actually monitor the, the diet quality. It, it's also a reason why we don't want to be making decisions based on purely on animal condition score. We really need to be monitoring the diet so we can get an indication of what those animals are actually going to do or what's going to happen to those animals before we actually see it in them. Because by the time we actually see animals losing weight, they very often are an accelerated weight loss. Thank you for watching this short clip from the Ruminant Nutrition webinar. If you have any questions or would like some more information, 
please visit www.leadingsheep.com.au.